And how you guys doing? Welcome to episode 816. How you guys doing? And gals can't forget about you. After all, we men can't live without you females. Anyway, today coming up, we have some real crazy stuff that is coming out of Canada. And it has to deal with a guy just got released on parole i guess he was part of organized crime but can you guess what the title of the article is yes the title of the article is he has ties to the hell's angels now that is making the club look bad yet, yet again in the eyes of the public because the way that the article was titled, he might have a freaking connection with one or two, three, whatever, but it doesn't mean he has a connection to the entire club. That's one thing I never understood about some of these people that write these articles, is just because somebody has ties to somebody, doesn't mean the club is a criminal organization. That's just like saying, okay, I have a friend whose brother's cousin's wife's sister is tied to a club. That doesn't mean anything. I don't know. I guess it helps the propaganda that clubs are bad. That's why they do it. We all know that's why they do it. I still think they're really jealous of us. But it happens. It happens. Anyway, Charlie Davidson's 2005 Y Glide right behind me, baby. Talking about a style. Now, that is a style I have never seen on a Dyna Y Glide myself. That blue. Holy moly, jolly woly is just unfreaking believable, man. And then the seat offsets it. It looks like it has. What is that? I'm trying to see here. It's harder to see on my side than it is your side. But uh, looks like it went up to a stage one, if I'm not mistaken there. And. The pipes are the two-in-ones, forward control, something I need to get on my damn bike. I cannot stand mid-shifts. But just beautiful, man. You know, powder-coated rims, it looks like. Gorgeous stuff, Charlie. Gorgeous stuff right there. This is one of my favorites that we I've featured on this show so far. Woo! Anyway... If you want to send in your ride, info at InsaneThrottleBikerNews.com. It can be featured right behind me. It can be stock. It can be Harley, Indian, uh, Yamaha. Whatever you have, two wheels will feature it for you. And just don't forget, I get a ton of these things. So when I get them, I put them in line. And then I'll email you when it is going to happen on the show. First up today, we have we have a motorcycle club raising awareness about concealed carry right now. Raising gun safety awareness here in Indianapolis. The group is called <laughs> Undefeated MC. They're educating the community on House Bill 1296, which repealed the requirement of a license to carry a handgun in Indiana. Their event focused on teaching how to interact with police when stopped with a loaded firearm in your car. A local pastor also took time to talk about conflict resolution and changing mentalities that lead to violent action. Good stuff right there. Good stuff. Basically going over rules, it looks like, to me anyway, from my vantage point of concealed carry. I just wish that these idiots in Washington would get it together. And you know what? They had an opportunity to do it, what was it, in 2016, 2017, where they would make everything across the board as a national concealed carry with all the rules and stuff. 
That way you didn't have to look at this map or that map to see which one you could carry in according to your CCW. Uh, I got the Utah one. I can carry in every state by my own state uh, that it says. Uh, then you got the Florida ones. There's a couple states here and there that Utah can't cover. But now I'm waiting for the class on the Illinois one because of the requirements that they put in. So, yeah, I wish they really would get a nationwide level playing field so everybody knows what's going on. Next story, there is a fundraiser for that paramedic. We actually covered this story earlier where he was helping out on the side of a road with an accident. Him and uh, his victim got killed. Sad state, sad state. But there's a fundraiser that was happening here that is. It's been more than a week since a car wreck in Florence took the lives of motorcyclist Cedric Gregg and paramedic Sarah Weaver. Today, a motorcycle club honored Gregg and Weaver by riding from the Bass Pro Shops in North Myrtle Beach to the Blackjack Harley Davidson in Florence. ABC 15's Joel Vasquez was there as those bikers began that ride. Members of the motorcycle club, Keepers of the Fallen, strapped on their helmets and revved up their engines in honor of Cedric Gregg and Sarah Weaver. Jonathan Falks tells me that even though he didn't know them, it's important to be there for the community in times of need. When you lose somebody, when a community comes together and helps each other, it just makes it a little easier on everybody. And you know, we just want to help. Many of these bikers come from different walks of life, but what brings them together is their love for the ride. A lot of the members of the Keepers of the Fallen, I did not know before I joined, and now I consider them my family. And this family has done a lot for other families, especially ones of first responders, motorcyclists, and veterans. Once you accomplish something, you raise money for somebody, and you, you, know, you present them with a the check or whatever, it's like, it's a really good feeling, you know, it makes you feel good inside, and it's like, you know, you're doing something good for somebody. That is awesome, seeing everybody come together, helping this family out, and helping a lot of people out in the community with the fundraisers. I wish, just wish, that the government would, you know, notice this kind of stuff that clubs do and bikers do. But no, you have to be asses all the time. It's even worse when they come up and say, well, one percenters only do that to hide their criminal activities. You guys are really schmucks. You really are schmucks. That's what I got to say to that one. Now, let's go to that story that I was talking about here. And you know what? Let me cover another one real quick here. This was a pretty big one. And that is Jurors Decide Fate of Road Night Motorcycle Club Arsonists. We covered this story as well. And it's finally come to a conclusion. A jury found a Kogan station man guilty of burning down a motorcycle club on February 9th of 2020. So it looks like it was about a year and six months from the event that he finally was convicted, it looks like. And he had a two-day trial. And Damian Millington along with a jury of his peers, listened to the testimony of the chief investigator and fire uh, investigator, Millington's landlord and his ex-girlfriend, as the prosecution built a case to prove he was guilty of burning down the Road Knight Motorcycle Club in Hepburn Township. Must have pissed off his ex-girlfriend. Uh, he faced 12 charges uh, ranging from felony arson to witness intimidation, criminal trespass, risk and catastrophe, theft, and other related charges to setting the fire that destroyed the motorcycle club clubhouse, by the way. Because if you're saying he destroyed the motorcycle club, that means it don't exist anymore. It was the clubhouse. Come on, let's get it straight. Uh, a felony strangulation charge was withdrawn, and a charge of convicted felon not to possess a firearm was severed, and uh, the jury found him guilty on uh, charges of arsons, intimidation of witnesses, criminal trespass, 
burglary, criminal mischief, and risking catastrophe. Now, the fire tree called the structure of uh, a tinderbox. It was almost all constructed of wood. And then it goes on to give the whole back end of the story of what they covered in trial and stuff. So that comes to a conclusion. Now, here it is. Organized crime figure tied to Hell's Angels get full parole. So instead of focusing on this guy's an organized crime figure, they had to pull the Hell's Angels into the mix. See how they did this? On freaking real, man. A uh, drug trafficker with known ties to the Hell's Angels who once clashed with the Rosado organization has been granted full parole after he convinces parole officers he's a changed man. Rock and roll. Everybody can change, man. Uh, Sergio uh, Pissarro, really? I don't know. 62. By his own admission, a childhood friend of Salvatore Cazetta, a leader among the Hells Angels in Quebec. So he's a childhood friend. That was like the example I gave earlier. Anybody can have a friend or a family member in a club. Uh, he was also a member of the Devil's Ghost, I guess, a support club of the notorious biker gang. Also, during 2005-2006, he had a part in a very heated dispute between the Rosado organization and a group based in Granby involved in smuggling marijuana into the United States. So the dude has organized crime experience, if you will. But I just don't get they he gets tied to the Hells Angels because he w was a childhood friend of one of their leaders. That's insanity, man. It, 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 it's really unfortunate that's how they had to perceive this article. You could have talked about his ties to why he was actually in jail in the first place, but instead you did this whole long type of deal. Because he was childhood friends with a Hell's Angel, and you bring them into it? It's just wow, you people, wow. Anyway, we're going to go over to the second half of the show with China Dow Live. If you want to hear the replay of it, you can get it on all the major podcast platforms. And thanks for sticking around! For the entire video. Don't forget to hit to like and subscribe this. And also, if you want, if you could, if you're awesome, watch another video on me. Rock on.